Hey guys, this is Jason from Outdoor Adventures. Thanks for joining me. Today we're going to talk about staying dry while you're sleeping during winter camping. One of the biggest gripes for me winter camping is waking up in the morning and having your sleeping bag completely soaked due to the condensation from you breathing all night. Now, after watching Suge Emery's videos, and if you haven't heard of him, check him out. I'll link him in the description. I recently saw him using uh, what he calls a frost bib. Um, so I thought I'd, you know, mess around and try to make my own. I believe he made his out of a, uh, you know, a polar fleece shirt that he had laying around that he wasn't using. He cut it up. But actually, you can get this polar fleece, you know, at any... Um, at any craft store, you can get it online on Amazon, which is where I got mine. You're laying in your hammock, you're sleeping, and as you're breathing, that moisture coming out of your mouth is basically, it's freezing, it's landing on your quilt, and then it's warming up again, just from your body heat, and it's it'll make your sleeping bag or your quilt soaked. Now to get around this, basically use this piece of fabric in front of your mouth as kind of like a catch-all, so as I'm sleeping now, the moisture from my breath goes right into the frost bib. So I didn't find any really, any good articles or how-to videos on how to make one of these. And to be honest, it's really simple. You can probably figure this out on your own. But I just wanted to share with you how I made mine. So let's take a look at it. Here's what you're going to need. Okay guys, to start this project, you're going to want to buy yourself a piece of polar fleece. This stuff is really cheap. I think I got this uh, two yards of this fabric for uh, four bucks on Amazon. You can find this stuff at most craft stores, Joann Fabrics, etc. Um, and you're not going to want a big piece. A yard will do fine. You can actually make a couple frost bibs out of this in case you screw up one. Now the polar fleece is a little thicker than the normal fleece that you can find, but you, I, I think you really want polar fleece. Um, just from my testing, this, this fleece is a little bit thicker comparatively than other fleeces, and what that means for you is you can breathe on this side of the fabric and it's not going to soak through and get your quilt or your sleeping bag wet. So definitely get some polar fleece or other kind of material that's a little bit thicker. Okay, and I just have this little T-square here that we're going to use to measure. Um, you don't need a lot. I think the piece that I used that was working really well for me was 11 by 18. So that's what we're going to do. Uh, feel free to just eyeball this, whatever you want to do. It doesn't need to be exact. It doesn't need to be specific. But we're just going to make it 11 by 18. And we're just going to simply cut it. Like I said, it doesn't need to be completely exact here. And from there we have our piece of fabric that we're going to use for our actual frost bib. Now the next step um, and the last piece of cutting that you need to do is you need to cut out a little slot for your, where your neck is. So um, there's no real exact way to do this. I mean, just kind of eyeball it and just you know cut a circle. Make sure you're um, about an inch in on both sides, and it should be good to go. I'm gonna leave myself probably uh, one and a quarter inches. Now, like I said, it doesn't need to be exact. It's just a frost bib. No one's gonna see it. These scissors I'm using aren't the best scissors in the world. Okay. Alright, and that's pretty much the bib. Now, if you want, you don't have to do any sewing at all. If you want to be lazy like I did with, with this one right here, this is the prototype that I used uh, when, I, when I tried to get the sizing correctly. All I did with this one was I poked a hole in here and I tied off a piece of shot cord, poked a hole over here and I tied off a piece of zingit, 
which we're going to get to later. So if you're going to, if you don't want to do any sewing at this point, all you got to do is put a hole here and here, right where my thumbs are, and another and another two holes right here where my thumbs are and then you can fast forward the video to where we get to the part about the, the uh, tying down but for those of you who want to make it look nice and this will also actually spread the fabric out a little more you're just going to want to fold this side over right here and fold these two ends up right here we're actually going to create a little stitch here here and then along here and that's going to be able to be used as a channel to slide cordage in and that's how we're going to attach it to our hammock. So let's go to the sewing machine and we'll start doing that. guys and after you have this done you're just going to want to take your shot cord and just slide it through <laughs> okay just like that and then we're going to tie it off here and here. So first we're going to wrap this around. Just gonna make a knot, a couple knots. Okay, and then we'll do the same thing with this side. Just cut a little bit. Okay, so there's your bib, and then we can cut the ends off of that. Okay, now for the other side, I'm using Zingit. You can really use whatever you want. Just tie a little knot like that onto the end of the Zingit just to keep it on the zip tie. So you can just thread it right through this now. OK. 
Okay. And slide the zip tie right through. And hope the zinc doesn't come off. Okay. So there we go. We can untie this now. All right. Now this, all you want to do is you just want to tie just something like this. Okay. Almost like you're like hanging a picture frame. All right. So we can just simply just cut this off right here. All right. Center it in the loop. And here we're just going to tie a knot. Let's take the two ends and just tie them together. Okay. And that's not going anywhere. Now, to make it look nice, we're going to cut these ends off. This stuff is really <laughs> okay okay now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a lighter to the end of this and just burn it a little bit so it doesn't fray or anything all right perfect and then I'll do the same thing with a shock cord just to just so it doesn't fray on me Okay, and to make this knot look so ugly, we're going to actually drag this knot through the fabric, if I can get it in there, just so you don't see the knot. Okay. All right, and that's pretty much your frost bib. Um, now we'll go over to the hammock and we'll actually attach it. Okay, and to finish this project up, we're just going to take another piece of zingit um, and we're going to just fold it like this. Take these two ends exactly like we did with the zingit on the actual bib itself. Just fold it like that, shove it through. And we're going to slide this knot down. Um, you can kind of play around with the length that you're going to need for this. Um, it really doesn't matter. Just as long as you kind of have a loop that's about this big. Okay, so, and we're just going to burn the ends off again. Okay. Now, to actually attach the bib portion we're going to attach it right to the ridge line and we're going to do this with with what's called a prusik knot. Basically, you're going to fold you're going to take the loop and you're going to fold it over top of the ridge line. And you're going to take the knot end and basically just keep wrapping it through itself. So you're just going to go like this. And I'll show you this a couple times for the people that don't know how to do this. It's that's 2 3 and we're just going to do four. Okay, and then we're going to take this and tighten everything up. What this allows us to do is to get, once it's really tight, it allows us to slide this knot around very easily whenever we're grabbing the knot itself. But whenever we're grabbing this part, it doesn't allow it to move very easily at all. Okay, so very easy. But once it's pulled, it's really not going anywhere. All right, let me show you how to do that knot again. It's, I believe it's called a prusik. If it's not, and I don't have the technical term to that, I apologize. This just works very well. Okay, so again, the loop, fold over top of the ridge line. 
all right? And you're going to basically just take the knot and wrap it inside. Okay, take the knot and wrap it inside. Again, you just keep looping until you have about four times around, okay? And then you can pull this tight. Okay, see how that's going? And pull it really tight, okay? Don't be afraid to lock it down. Okay, and that's where we're gonna put our S beaner. Okay, so this is my Night Eyes number two size S beaner. This works very well. I used it to actually hang my quilts as well. And we're just gonna clip that right into that loop. And then finally, we're going to take our frost bib and hook it right onto the S beaner as well. You have that movable little knot, that prusik, and you can just throw this over your head, lay down, and that should catch, you know, 90 to 100% of your breath that you're breathing. So, and that'll keep it off your quilt or your sleeping bag. Now you can use it just like this without the uh, the other pieces zing it attached to your ridge line. If you're using a tent, uh, or just you know, if you don't want to have it attached to your ridge line, you can do whatever you want with it, and uh, it'll still catch your breath, so your bag isn't wet in the morning. So, guys, I really like this. This has solved you know a lot of the issues. You know, when waking up in the morning, that clamminess of your bag, um, you, you know, you have to stop and dry your bag out before you leave camp, you know, getting your bag frozen and not providing enough warmth for you. And I want to send a big thank you to Shug Emery for, you know, showing the frost bib in his videos. He didn't show actually how to make it, but, you know, it's easy to figure out. And it has solved a lot of my issues. So, big thanks to Shug. I do appreciate you, Shug. And uh, thanks for giving me the idea. So, guys... This is Jason from Outdoor Adventures. I hope this helps somebody.